Hello and welcome to the First Issue Club comic book podcast. We're your weekly show that talks about comic books and first issues. We're just like Sue Storm. Obviously, we got to love a good read <laughs> in order to do this every week for the past five years. You know, someday I'm going to be able to bounce off of you like Greg does. Hey, no pressure, man. <laughs> Me and Greg have been doing it, like I said, five years. Yeah. You guys are a well-oiled machine. We've got that chemistry. We're in sync with each other. It's true. And I just charge in here bullheaded. That's exactly right. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I know when I'm gazing up at the stars, I can feel Greg doing it across Kansas City. Yeah, you guys are like Feifel from (laughs) Feifel Goes West. We're we're linked up here. (laughs) I've got to start with where I'm at mentally. Well... First of all, (laughs) let's start with who you are. Oh, I'm Mike D. And I'm Vargas. That's right. Perfect. So Mike D, guy talking now, um, before uh, Vargas was about going to head over today, I was out walking my dog. If you're owl-eared, you may have heard our First Issue Club mascot jingling around in the background of our studio. Yep. Um, Louis Louis the dog. I was walking him. And he's a little rambunctious on walks, and he spotted another dog down the street and tried to take off running for it. And that made me slip off of a curb, and I turned my ankle really bad. Um, I want to say, in the moment, everything just is like panic. Sure. It was it was so bad. I feel like I heard it pop. Uh-huh. Um, I went right down to the ground called my wife to come pick me up, and then I passed out. So your season's over. <laughs> yeah. I am officially gone for the rest of the playoffs. Yeah, you're on the IR. I will I will not be helping Fick in any physical activity. <laughs> right. Moving forward, happy to keep the podcast going, and it's the least I could do. Yeah, we've got a we've got a nice clipboard for you mm-hmm. to hold on to on the sidelines. Kickball team I'm not gonna be available for. <laughs> Yeah, uh, when you sent that text, well, your wife was nice enough to to text us and say, Mike might be down for the count. Yeah. And I was like, that's cool. But she was like, he rolled his ankle. And and I was like, okay, that's bad. I mean, really? I mean, that's, (laughs) I'm not going to presume that you're not injured. Yeah. Like, okay, fine, whatever. It's a silly podcast. We can do whatever we want with it. Yep. But when you sent that follow-up text that was like, I passed out, I was like, oh my God, like, is his foot still attached? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's start, It's ballooning more and more by the hour. Um, and I've, I've never had a physical injury hurt so bad. Sure. I've broken my arm before. I've, you know, busted the skin on my head open from like running into a ledge. Yeah. Um. Nothing has ever, I've been, you know, tapped in sensitive areas <laughs> Have during, we all? during basketball or, or even racquetball once, which was a nightmare. Um, but this was the worst um, physical pain I've ever had from an accident. And yeah, I, I woke up with a, a really nice couple had like stopped because they just saw a passed out guy strapped to. Luckily, my dog, I wear a little thing around my waist. Okay. That straps him to me. Good. Because he does pull so bad, right? Yeah. So it's just like a little bit of extra insurance. Uh huh. Otherwise, I would have knocked out and he would have been down the street and yeah. we might have never seen him again because he loves chasing cars. And Jeez. it would have been a disaster. But a really nice couple stopped and kind of woke me up and made sure I was okay until Becky got there. Which so. you clearly weren't. Nobody passes <laughs> out and they're like, yeah, I'm fine. And I felt, I felt nauseous for a good hour or more afterwards. So I'm hanging in there. I'm a little <laughs> woozy still. If some of my takes are bad today, I'm going to blame the ankle. Sure. Everyone knows I'm ankle brained. Yeah, right, right, right. We've said that for years. <laughs> all, my, all my good takes come with all my physical activity. They and come directly from the ankle. Exactly right. <laughs> Trying to recreate these things these superheroes are doing in my own real life. Yeah. Living my truth through comics and enacting those things. Can't do that today. Right. So it may change my perspective for the worse. Well, that's okay. All right. You're you're here. It's a safe space. You're, yeah. You're you're here and we applaud you for it. 
<laughs> if if I blacked out earlier today, I probably would have been like, no, I'm not no, going to. Guess what? I'm taking the, Sorry. the rest of the day off. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I drive a two-footed car, too, so that would have been a little tough. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if my ankle was swollen. Uh-huh. A little tough shifting, but I'm, I'm glad you're okay. Thank I'm glad you. you're up and around. I appreciate it. Take it easy tomorrow, because that thing's going to be the size of a football. Oh, my God. I'm, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to situate my office tonight, yeah. so it's ready to go for me to just put my foot up somewhere. Yeah. Get yourself a nice cold compress. That's, that's exactly right. Um, what we're going to do today is what we always do. Talk about some comic book news and uh, hit some first issues that we talked about or, or read rather. And then uh, I, I just thought I'd mention too that this episode maybe will be a little bit shorter because we're recording late. Be- hey, we'll see. Because of said accident. Hey, we'll see. <laughs> you know, we'll see where it takes us. I am mostly excited for the Patreon tonight. Yeah, that's right. If you want to get in on that, first issue doc, first issue club. No, patreon.com slash first issue club. I had it flippity flopped. Yep. Uh check it out. You can join for only a dollar. Um, I put in a, a haul video this week and I've got more haul on the Patreon, but this one is a cautionary haul tale. Oh, all right. So <laughs> I'm sure I'll have opinions. <laughs> We're all going to have a pick. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> what news you got, Mike D? Um, a handful of things. I know that uh, we now officially know that Leah Williams is getting a Power Girl series mm-hmm. um, coming in September, I think, that's going to follow the events of Night Terrors, which mm-hmm. is a Dawn of DC event. Yes. Night Terrors just destroyed my comic spending budget for this month i I, I pre-order like a month ahead there's like 20 books yeah the the one thing i really appreciate about dc events lately and they did this for future state Mm -hmm. where they just said okay we're going to stop the normal ongoings and every book that comes out for the next month is going to be in service of this event Mm -hmm. so you can kind of be like if I'm reading Batman, I'm going to pick up the Batman Future State books and skip the rest. Yeah. For me, that's kind of hard to do. It's hard to like get excited for an event and be like, but I'm going to skip all these other ones that might, yeah. be, might be important to the story, might not. You know, It's like hard to tell with all the tie-ins. Yeah. Might introduce a new character or something because it's a fun event. Um, so I went hard on those issues, this this order period. But I do appreciate that the normal runs that I buy are kind of paused. So it opened up a little bit of money for me to follow Night Terrors. Yeah. But that being said, really excited for Leah Williams to be writing Power Girl. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I, like I think I already said, it's been something like 10 years since she's had an, an ongoing. That long? Yeah. Wow. Which is, yeah, really surprising for such like a fan favorite character. Yeah. Part of the super family. Yeah. Um, during this Dawn of DC event, they've done a great mini as a backup for a lot of like the action comics books or Lazarus mm-hmm. Planet tie-ins. That's right. Where she's like doing a lot of self-exploration. She's got this new kind of psychic ability and is using that to be like introspective and help other people out with their like deep-seated issues and, you know, reflecting those problems back on herself. Mm-hmm. So we're already getting a power girl with more depth than maybe she's been treated with in the past. Sure. And something something to differentiate her from the other super folks. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Um, I think there's a I took a couple screenshots. Well, one, there's a John Boy Myers cover. Oh, yeah. Which is killer. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting that whether I read the book or not. Yeah, for sure. It's great. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, and then they've got a costume redesign that looks really slick and I think is a lot more. Um, That's rad. Appropriate. And with the times like I'm all about, um, you know, comic books, but a part of comic books is being like she still has the boob window she okay yes confirmed still has the the window but it's a triangle Mm -hmm. 
and a little less it's more like a normal deep v yeah now right than it was just like oh my god a circle for no reason (laughs) yeah so much cleavage yeah um yeah which i like i appreciate that it does like it's an homage to like the original character design Mm -hmm. but it's also updated and it looks like something someone would actually wear at least on like this john boy myers yeah cover in particular maybe that's not the case when we start to see more of this but she's wearing a cool leather jacket with yeah, the, the jacket's like, red super family logo on the sleeve um that looks really cool um and uh, i was building towards a you know a point that i think there's a lot of if you've been listening to the podcast for a while you know we talk a lot about these comic books that explore sexuality and feeling sexually liberated and em- embracing that about yourself. Whereas, you know, sometimes in this nerdy fandom, uh, it's it's hard for people to find that air arena of life that's, like, very important. Yeah. And, and we should um, talk about these things, and they should be in our art, and we should be proud of ourselves in our bodies. Um, that being said... I think there's, <laughs> there's a way to uh, more appropriately handle that with some of these more like classically sexualized characters. Sure. And I think Leah Williams is definitely one of those writers. If you've read her like Exterminators run, she writes those characters that are like such girly girls and they're out partying and they're feeling sexy. Yeah. But they're not, it doesn't feel just in service of a male gaze. It's done with, uh, particular respect for the character's self-identity yeah as a white man myself mm-hmm. um <laughs> <laughs> your opinion is very important yeah here. my opinion everyone <laughs> should really stop what they're doing and listen to what i have to say uh no i i think i don't i don't know how i would do it no as I'm, a writer yeah whatever but i think leah williams does a great job of portraying the fact especially in in something like exterminators yep where it starts at, on like a drunken bender girls night yeah they she does a great job of like having them in costumes that are sexy yep but it is portrayed to you the reader as it's not for you yep it's for them because they that's what they want to dress like and that makes them feel good yep so i have no doubt that supergirl will portray that same attitude yeah And, and we've we've touched on this before where there's kind of like a dialogue of who should be writing what characters yeah and i think it's important to to note that you know, uh, a guy can write Catwoman, and a and a woman can write Batman. Yeah, you know of what course, I mean. Of like, course. like obviously, that's that's um, th- these these great creators have great stories in their head, and they demand to be told for these certain characters um, to to get these things out here to this fandom. That's so great, but. Um, there are important moments with these characters where we're growing or reinventing or restylizing or contextualizing who that character is. And yeah. I'm really excited as someone who's becoming more and more of a Superman family action comics family fan over the last year um, to see Power Girl recontextualized by somebody who is so good at doing what she does in that space so for sure super stoked on seeing what happens with this even though i know i said it's coming out in september but we've got a one shot that's gonna kind of hold us over okay until the new one comes out that sets up a couple things for power girl is that in between night terrors and the ongoing there's a one shot yeah i think it's i think it comes out during the night terrors barrage okay (laughs) okay (laughs) i pre-ordered it last month and then i pre-ordered most of my night terrors books this month so it's going to either like lead into night terrors or be amongst them got it cool yeah um and definitely pick up that john boy yeah that john boy myers covers is sick um okay i wanted to shout out um a story i heard about this guy jake edwards 
who owns Time Tunnel Comics okay. in North Carolina. Do you know anything about this? Never heard it. So he's he and some fellow like shop owners in a in a strip mall stopped a sexual assault and hell yeah heard someone like hollering from somewhere and then he one of his buddies who was in his shop and a couple of the other shop owners from around the area just like all ran outside together <laughs> and yeah. just started like spreading and like looking for like what's the issue what's going on um they maced this guy who was attacking this woman um there's not a lot of details sure ab- about it because it it is a sexual assault sure um but they grabbed this guy put him in a headlock held him in their shop until the authorities arrived and i was just like Fucking yes, comic book people. Yeah, doing <laughs> doing real hero shit. Being a real hero, yeah, <laughs> that's dope as so, hell. He said like the thing that you know a lot of people say when you know, and, and a lot. I'm sure tons of people are making this parallel with him because he's a comic shop guy, and he was just like anyone would have done the same thing. Um, but it is cool to hear about like you know people hearing someone's in trouble, and then everybody. <laughs> it's just like Avengers assemble, like yeah. running outside of their shops, just like I'm ready to stop this. Yeah. So that's really cool. I I just really enjoyed hearing that after like, you know, we've had a rough couple weeks in Missouri and just across the United States in general with um, people getting shot for like, yeah, trying being to get, people for yeah walking into the wrong driveway. Uh, trying to open the wrong car, yeah. like all sorts of stupid shit. That's just like racially motivated or, um, you know, something that's just a, a small confusion. Yeah. Um, and we're hurting people when instead, you know, we should be helping people. And I just, uh, that, that story kind of brought a smile to my face. So yeah. Share some positives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, people, you don't need to be afraid of people. Yeah. Most, like 99% of the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. You just don't. It's unnecessary. <laughs> and if you are afraid of somebody, you know, stay in your fucking house and mind your fucking business. Yeah. <laughs> what's the worst? What's the worst thing that happens? Like someone knocks on your door too long? Like, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Like, think before you pull out a gun, dumb shits. You get it. <laughs> You're preaching to the choir, chief. <laughs> I'm just mad. We're all mad. Like, especially, like, obviously, everyone's mad across the country, but as Kansas Cityans, yeah. we're like, it's particularly uh, rough this these last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, I know we've got, just a reminder, free comic book day. Hell yeah. First weekend up, in May. First weekend in May, which lands on the 6th. So, Saturday, May 6th. Go to your comic shops. Get get yourself some free comics. Um. I've been hearing a lot of things just again to kind of ride the good news train. I've been hearing more and more stuff about comic shops being like, you know, bring some canned goods and you can take yeah, more nice. free comics and, and doing stuff like that. Yeah. Um, there was a while in Kansas City where free comic book day felt very um, gatekeepy. Yeah. Where it was like, we're only going to give certain free comics to the people who have pull lists and <laughs> and yeah. you have to like pay for free spend com- 25 bucks or yeah, whatever but yeah. you're they're basically making you pay for the free comics if you want more than one yeah. and it's like one that's kind of tough like i like the you know being able to come in and just grab you know three three is the like minimum you should <laughs> I, get three yeah right? i th- i think three is probably like fair for most people like if you're if you're a little kid there's tons of comics that are geared towards kids yeah if you're a regular reader, I mean Marvel and Marvel at least prints so damn many of these free comic book day comics yeah. that there's enough for everybody. Just let people have them for sure. Um, so yeah, I love the idea of of being like, hey, it's free stuff. You can come in and get your three free comics. But if you're a mega fan, you know, show Harvesters some love. Yeah, and uh, you're seeing more and more comic shops do stuff like that and. And you get a couple extra of the free comics out of it. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's dope. I know I saw a Jeff Lemire book that Image is doing. 
that looked kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the Spider-Man uh, Venom book and then the Avengers X-Men book. Yep. Those are probably be my three if I had to pick. Yeah, I haven't looked at like the big list yet. Um, I know last year there was like last year there was a ton a of ton stuff of that them. people were like uh, ravenous for. Yeah, I think, w- didn't they do the um, the House of Slaughter? Yep. Preview was a free comic book day book, and everyone was like, obviously now that book you can buy it for like a couple bucks online because again yeah. they print so many of these. Right. But that and Stray Dogs. Yeah, had a free comic book day thing. Barbaric and barbaric. Yeah, people were going nuts for a handful of them. Yeah, uh, but even like 2000 AD had a free comic book day. Yeah, comic. That, was, that was legit. Um, Kaiju Eight was one of the <laughs> like manga free comic book yeah. day. You know that was cool. I you know, something I never would have picked up. Yep. Otherwise, mm-hmm. uh, that's the stuff I like to get. Yep. On free comic day, I know. Um, Will at Elite Comics. In Overland Park, which is a Kansas City suburb, um, if you work in corporate America, you probably have teleconferenced with somebody in Overland Park. Yeah, it's just like all office buildings. Yep. <laughs> um, but uh, this great guy Will has a comic shop uh, down off of Quivira, um, around that area, and he's uh, he always does great stuff for this kids' toy drive. That's awesome. associated with our, our kids' hospital in Kansas City. And I think he does a thing where you can donate, like, a certain amount of money, and you just get, like, a brick of, like, all the free comics. That's dope. So you're like, if I'm, like, a super comic freak, yeah. you know, we've got a podcast. If we want to, like, r- r- rank and read all the free comic books from the week, which I would never do. Oh, but, that's <laughs> way too much but, reading. But last the, a year or two ago, I was like... Yeah, I'll donate like 80 bucks and just take a brick of free comics yeah. and I don't have to worry about like if I got the ones I want, walk in, walk out and donate some money. So That's pretty awesome. Plenty of shops are starting to do more and more stuff like that. So yeah. I love that. You know, speaking of free comic book day, I've got my Marvel previews here. Yes. Marvel is actually selling their free comic book day comics now. They're collecting all of the stories in a single issue. Oh, no kidding. And selling them after the fact. Wow, so if you missed them, you can, you can get per- your hands on it still. You can purchase, correct. That's great. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty uh, cool idea. It's in here somewhere. I'm not going to right. it find it. But yeah, you know, it's I think it's four ninety nine or something. Yep. So like you pay a buck an issue or whatever. Sure. But yeah, it's all their free comic book day stuff. Um, on top of that, they're also doing for seven ninety nine, Mike D, a reprint of all new Marvel point one now or whatever. The first uh Miss Marvel. Too much money. Yeah. <laughs> Seven ninety nine. If memory serves, that's a pretty normal sized comic, right? It, so I pulled my issue out. Uh-huh. It it was a five ninety nine book when it came out. Yeah, okay. Um but eight bucks yeah, for a, for facsimile? a facsimile? Pass. Hard pass. Yeah, that's too much money. I was like, cool. Now I don't have to like have mine loose yeah, yeah you know i could slab it or i could do whatever <laughs> yeah but like damn that's a steep price marvel yeah, that is steep i've been buying more facsimiles lately just because i do like filling that gap in the collection and saying like i can have my run together i can pull pull those books out and not have to like again stress about mussing up an older comic yeah um on the patreon a couple of weeks ago i was showing my original Avengers nine and my facsimile Avengers nine. Um, and one of the things I love about that comic, that's just such a wacky time capsule thing is there's this ad to buy a squirrel monkey with in the comic. And it's like a coupon you cut out yeah, and you send in like 10 bucks and they ship you a squirrel monkey via the mail. And the ad says eats real human food, even lollipops. Now, <laughs> this is obviously it's colossally fucked up. I like showing people that just because it's like, isn't this bonkers? Yeah. I hate the idea that it ever happened. And you think about all these like monkeys that were like taken and just, sh- you know, not shipped across, not the domesticated country. and just like shipped to random people who like, who knows if they took care of fed 
properly, right. did all the things for these um, little squirrel monkeys that were getting shipped all over the country. <laughs> Um, and then some kid shoves a lollipop in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, right. And they're just eating like sugar and candy all the time. Ugh, what a nightmare. So awful. Ugh. But I, I, I love being able to show people that comic and being like, isn't this nuts that this used to be something? And now I don't have to pull out like a uh, high dollar scary comic to touch. Yeah, you can pull out your fat. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So yeah, they're they're great for stuff like that and just being like, I, a comic I know I'll never buy uh-huh. has a place in my um, run now, so that's great. I like I like having ones that I have like a copy of. I've mm-hmm. got an original copy, and I've got a yep. fix, like the Spider Gwen. Yeah, is great because right. you can like have that run of Spider Verse. Yep. without putting mm-hmm. <laughs> a four hundred dollar comic <laughs> right in, in the, the middle, middle of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting some short box lean and stress on your spine. Yeah, no, I pulled no, no. out a book the other day. Um, that I had no idea, again, shout out to Cover Price for teaching me things about comics that um, I didn't know were worth anything <laughs> yeah. in my collection. But there was an early Chip Zdarsky Daredevil issue that has his face, Daredevil's face, on Punisher's oh, yeah. chest. Uh-huh. And that book sells for like 25 30 bucks pretty regularly. Sure. It- there's nothing else about that issue other than it's a cool cover. Yeah. And I would have had no idea that that was a, a a book that people are like specifically looking for if it weren't for cover price. So I pulled that one out um, while I was just going through my books and saying anything above. I've kind of been doing this over time where I've said anything above 50 bucks, I want to pull out in a top loader. Sure. And now that I've slabbed a lot of things, I've got more top loaders free. So then I go anything above 40, then anything above 30, and I'm like slowly getting the... And then eventually your whole collection And then eventually be my loaders. entire collection's in top loaders. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this book in particular I took out because it, it passed that tier I was looking at, and the spine roll on it was brutal yes brutal yes and that's a newer comic too so that's that has me thinking like i'm kind of glad there's a couple things that were more recent that i pulled out to get slabbed this time around and it's got me thinking about doing that a little more sending things some things to cgc a little more liberally if it's like a big Spider-Man event is happening, and Spider-Man's one of my guys. Yeah. It's one of my characters. So even something that's like a loose key that might not even pan out to be something people remember in a couple years, I, I it'll still be fun for me to like have Spider-Boy's first appearance in a slab. Sure. So that might be one that I'll just send in um, just in case because I've got it minty fresh right now. Yeah. All my... My Moon Knight 25s that yeah. I'm going to buy every variant of because it's got the first uh, Scarlet Scarab. I bought that um, Scarlet Scarab, the Scarlet Scarab cover, which is, I think, of I don't the, know. Of that, that mini series. Of that mini series, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And so I bought a couple cop, I bought a couple variants of the issue 25 uh-huh. and then a couple variants of the mini series first because you know, I don't know if like one's going to end up being a cameo. Or if she, one's going to be the full appearance for sure. Yeah, Layla shows up in twenty five. Okay, as Layla, and then she shows up Becomes, as Scarlet Scarab in the mini. This is a point we were talking about today on our Discord. Discord. Yep. Um, I'll get into that for several of you who are not on our Discord, which if not, you should be. Um, the I bought a book today that's Captain America. Can you see what the number is from here? It's, oh. Captain America something or other. <laughs> I'll go look. <laughs> and it is Carla Sofin's first appearance. 192. 192, Vargas says. Captain America and the Falcon, 192. And Carla Sofin shows up for the first time, and she later becomes Moonstone. Yeah. And Carla Sofin's first appearance, I've got it, you know, a really nice copy of it, was $6 on eBay. And, you know, generally just sells for, like, less than 10 bucks. Uh, the copy I got of Moonstone's first appearance, which is up on my wall right now, pulled it out just because I got that book and kind of completed my Sofin, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> my Sofin keys. Um, but that's a 9.4, and that book goes for over 100 bucks. And it's um, funny to me that a character's first appearance is often the lesser 
valuable than the the issue where they become the superhero. I, here's my thought of why. Yeah. Specifically in older books like this, mm-hmm. right? It's because what was the time difference on her showing up in this cap issue between her like years probably years. It was like six years. So that's probably why. Yeah. Is because tons of characters were introduced like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is Foggy Nelson's third cousin. Yep. Okay. Does Foggy Nelson's third cousin end up being the classic Daredevil villain? No. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, of course not. Right. So like Nobody cares about that first appearance because it's not really the first appearance. Like, it's not really the character yet. You know what I think a lot of it comes down to as well is, like, the covers become iconic of these ones where you're like, oh, we introduced so-and-so. Yeah. Like, we, um, in one of the books we were talking about on the Discord today was Kelly Thompson's first issue of... Captain uh Captain Marvel introduced Ripley Ryan, mm-hmm. who in issue six of that run becomes Star. Right. And that book where she becomes Star is one of uh, you know, it's something that goes for around twenty, twenty five bucks sometimes. Yeah. If that character shows up in the MCU at some point, it might be like a hundred dollar book. Who right. knows? But that first issue wherein that character shows up as just a regular person. Yeah has kind of already faded into obscurity and, like, isn't really referenced as a first appearance. Yeah. We mentioned the same thing with Cindy Moon, who shows up in a handful of Spider-Man issues before Volume 3, Number 4. Yeah. In which she becomes Silk. Right. That's the book to have. Um, Just interesting to me that you would think the person (laughs) might trump the mantle, but that's, that's... uh, often not the case. Deadly Neighborhood Spider-Man, another example. In the first issue, yeah. the new character who becomes, you know... A Demon new... Spider or whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Crystal Spider, Demon yeah. Spider, whatever it is. I always say Crystal Spider. Why do I think it's Crystal Spider? I don't know. Maybe it's just because the character design looks like it's made out of crystal. It's oh, like yeah. purpley, like... It looks like Amethyst or something. Yeah. Um, crystal Spider, Dan Slot, hit us up. Yeah. <laughs> We've got another one for you, baby. There's a, did you see that annual too? Is like really popping off, or not annual? There's like a special, um, there's like a Spider-Man Voices book or something like the kind of like anthology style Spider-Man uh-huh. book that introduced another two characters, and people are just going like rabid for all these new um, Spider-Man characters. I can't, I can't keep up. It's got me thinking. I should slab some of my um, other ones that have just been like for a while, long time, like Spider Punk was a book that was worth like five, ten bucks just because they were introducing so many Spider-Man characters. Yeah. But with the new ones they're introducing and that are getting buzz, I'm like, shoot, now Spider-Punk is like an OG yeah. <laughs> variation of Spider-Man. Same with like Spider-Man UK and yeah. all those other characters. I'm Spider-Man like, India is getting his own mini. Yeah, I'm like, I should slab all these first appearances now just because... Just in case. <laughs> yeah, just in case. And people love all this the Spider-Man variations and with the Miles Morales movies. Like, I don't think that stuff's really going anywhere. It's like now, just like clones are a part of the Spider-Man world, so are mul- alternate universe variations now. Yeah. So they're just a part of it. Yep. <laughs> and I guess I'm lucky I have them all and I don't have to, like, hunt them down and pay extra for them because... I've just like I buy like almost everything Spider Man. Yeah, eventually I'll get there. Eventually, people will realize Moon Knight superiority. Yes, <laughs> and, and my collection will be worth something. There you go. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if I have anything else. You know, I said this was going to be a shorty, and now I'm like, I've vamped on my like three topics for so so long. Oh, one last thing I wanted to mention, which I just didn't yeah. know was a thing and uh-huh. got a kick out of. Um, I saw an article about a comic shop in Knoxville that got um, is in the running for an Eisner for a top 25 comic shop in the world. Oh, okay. Cool. And I didn't know that Eisner the Eisner did awards for comic shops. I didn't know that either. Or how like they get nominated or 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 what happens, but um, I think knowing that, I'm more likely to be like, "Hey, I visited a cool shop." Yeah. Or no, like 
like I said, the guy Will um, in Kansas City is like such a cool guy and does so many stuff, so many things for like toy drives and charity that I'm like, well, you know, I'd be tweeting at them or like nominating his yeah. shop if I knew this was a thing um, just because he's such a good dude. Um, so I don't know, maybe figure out how that not, we'll figure out how that nomination thing works and report back maybe just cause that would be cool to show yeah. your, your comic shops. You love some, we'll, some love back. We'll let you know how to nominate vintage stock. Later. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best comic shops in the world. Two ninety nine preacher. Number one. Thank hey, you very much. <laughs> that's right. Some, some diamonds in the rough and boy, are they rough sometimes, but yeah. Sometimes it's more about just having the book than it is the condition. Yeah. Some there's some books that I have that are well loved and well read that I'm like I wouldn't change a thing. It's just cool to have and uh, it's I, I, it's kind of romantic sometimes, especially with some of my older books to think about like, man, this you know old copy of Amazing Spider-Man that's like kind of a you know early Black Cat key issue. Who knows how many different like little kids read this and <laughs> one and then it got flushed down the toilet, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the case <laughs> or it could have changed hands like 15 times through comic shops through the years very true and uh when i look at those dog-eared corners i, I kind of like to think about that and and remembering that this is a a community that kind of has a way of sharing our treasures through yeah. dollar bins for very true yeah very true you have a very much more romantic notion <laughs> of a beat-up comic book than i do <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's the only way to like save your brain from realizing a comic you have is worth a ton in just slightly better shape. Yeah. Uh, the only news hit I had was um, Marvel's doing more what if books. Yes. A whole series of what if dark. So very cool. Who knows what that's going to be all about. But um, the four that they've announced so far are Spider Gwen, Loki, Venom and Moon Knight. Uh, Spider Gwen is what if Peter Parker died instead of Gwen Stacy? Yep. Loki is what if Loki has Mjolnir? I think that's basically the premise. And Loki's written by Walter Simonson. That's so cool. So that's super <laughs> legit, going way back to his run. Yep. Um, Venom is what if the Thing became Venom after Secret Wars instead of Spider Man. Yep. And Moon Knight is, what if Moon Knight died after his first uh, encounter with Bushman? Yep. So, pretty cool. And the Moon Knight one does introduce a new character, so... Oh, all right. Wee, 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 sirens. You know, you, there there was a time when we'd say, what if comics, Elseworldian sort of a thing, yeah. doesn't matter if new characters are introduced... Not the case anymore. Correct. If they get enough love and enough buzz, Marvel will make it so. They, it will be canon. It, they will pull that from the multiverse into uh, the the normal continuity. So Correct. You got to be on the lookout for those things. Yes. And also, I guess, Moon Knight 25 and City of the Dead are mm -hmm. in FOC. Yeah. So <laughs> everybody order all your Moon Knight uh -huh. so that Moon Knight, you know, Gets more miniseries. I'm excited for this 25th issue of Moon Knight. Obviously, uh, Jed McKay is still writing it, right? Yeah. Um, Jed McKay is killing it. Um, such a good writer. Um, and I don't know how well that book sells in particular, but I have a feeling it doesn't get the love and readership it deserves. So doing something big like taking a character we love from the MCU and putting it in and debuting her in the comics yeah. is like a cool way to bring attention back to it and get some, get some new readers to yeah. make sure this book stays ongoing. And 25 is like a big anniversary issue for the character. Right. So it's cool that that's happening like all the same all time. together. Yeah. 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 I love that. So everybody go buy a hundred Moon Knight issues. <laughs> and that's the other thing about one of the really cool things um, I think recently about Marvel comics is that they're letting the let the numbering get high again yeah. with a lot of these like like a lot of like the the fact that the Captain Marvel run went like fifty issues yeah. is like killer. The fact that this Moon Knight book is already at twenty five issues is great. And you look back through the volumes of Moon Knight and Captain Marvel that have even made it past like 15 issues 
and it's a lot less than you would think. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the current run of Moon Knight in particular is volume nine. Yeah. And the vast majority, like two, two of the series are only four issues. Yeah. Um, I think the longest running one went um, 85 issues. Yeah. Maybe. I know uh, issue 60 was the, the last uh, issue of volume like three mm-hmm. with that uh, Stephen Platt cover. Yep. So, yeah, he he's never made it to 100. Maybe Jed McKay will be the guy. And these stories get, ah, I just like, there's so many books that I like and characters that I love because I read like Dennis Hopeless's Spider Woman run, which, you know, that was a book that didn't have a chance to have like, uh, singular set of creators for over 20 issues for it had had at least been a while obviously you've got like the classic run but it had been a while since we someone said okay jessica drew we're gonna like let somebody really figure out who she is and grow that character and when you let someone do that those characters that you love become things that you love even more so yeah um got to support these potential ongoings kills me that the black widow book that Kelly Thompson yeah. was doing with Elena Casagrande, I believe. Um, yeah, that book was wild. Stopped short, but yeah. oh, I love that one. I was looking forward to, to it going like fifty issues, and yeah. unfortunately, it didn't. But um, that's why you got to support these these books and characters you love. Yeah, same for thing sure. with the She Hulk Charles Soul um, run. Yeah, that he was doing that series was killer. Yeah, and it had set stuff up that like. It just like never got to tie a bow on, yep. um, which was such a drag. I love that series. Yeah, that one was awesome. Yeah, that's probably my favorite She Hulk run. Oh, it's great. Ap- apologies to Dan Slot. Yeah, <laughs> Dan Slot's run is great. It did a lot. I like. I think I said like, I the first issue of that is almost hard to read because it takes like who She Hulk was. Yeah, and. By the end of the issue, she's like, I got to get my life and my shit together. Yeah. (laughs) But now it's like it's hard to read who She-Hulk is at the beginning of that comic because they treat her like such like a floozy Uh who's waking up in like someone's apartment. She doesn't know where she is and, you know, doesn't get any respect from any of the fellow heroes because they all think she's a a ditz and an idiot. And you're like, man, this is tough. To see a character, but it pays off. Treated like this, but it pays <laughs> off. Yeah. So, just know if you go back and read Dan Slott's run, and you're like, "Woof, this is not aged well." Yeah, uh, it it's gonna evolve and kind of be a solution for some of those things that had happened to She Hulk over the years. Yeah, that first arc is mm-hmm. really really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, enough news. Yes. What'd you read? I read. Um, New Mutants Lethal Legion. And this is a book that... Should have known. Should have known you were picking up the New Mutants. I l- obviously, I'm a huge New Mutants fan if you've been listening to the show for a while. Um, Charlie Jane Anders is is writing this book. Um, and I wanted to shout this one out specifically because, again, we are from Kansas City, which toes the line between kansas and missouri sure and again rough news week for a lot of reasons or not rough news month yeah but one of the things that's been happening a lot in um missouri and kansas over the last couple um weeks and months has just been the expectation that trans people are going to lose a lot of rights and not be as protected as um we should be protecting these members of the community and these, you know, children who are trans. Yeah. Very cool and good stuff here in the Midwest. Ugh. It may like, it makes on one side, it makes me want to like move out of the Midwest and just be like, I'm sick of the hate and bigotry and violence. But that makes it even worse. If you, but it makes it worse (laughs) if you move away. And then I, I saw an article today that was like, there's, there was, um, a protest somewhere and a lot of people who are like trying to get a petition together to make Kansas city a sanctuary city. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's all I needed to hear to get that, like get out of the Midwest bug out of my head. Like 
let's be a part of a cool sanctuary city that like supports people and they know that you know businesses hey if you're going to help own a business in Kansas City you're not going to discriminate against these people you have like, to let everyone buy your wares <laughs> oh no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> poor you fucking assholes <laughs> All right, New Mutants. But New Mutants has um, a trans mutant who's a very cool character and and introduced a couple new um, characters. There's, um, you know, even, even, even though you don't, you know, comics are like alternative and punk and kind of introduce some of these like um, cultures that are being discriminated against into, into media kind of more more like earlier maybe more frequently than other medias do sure um i feel like you don't see a lot of characters that have like they them pronouns in comics still sure and i love that new mutants is one of the books that's doing that it feels like the right place for it i remember when i was really young and i was reading new mutants books that like having rain be like this um out of place feeling kid who'd been raised like Catholic, but like didn't really had all this Catholic guilt and yeah. didn't really know how to like deal with um, what Christians thought about her now that she was a mutant, you know, me kind of being a kid who was raised Catholic and like, didn't know like yeah. what to do with like, you know, I don't talk to God and everyone around me says they're talking to him all the time. Like, well, you know, what's going on? Yeah. Um, I identified with that character. And then you had characters like Karma and um, Roberto and Danny that were all these um, ethnicities that just weren't being represented at the time. And it felt very like now and like welcoming of the people that you thought were misfits. And then once you got to know them, you're like. People are people like it was so cool to have a book of young people who um, could make those personal relationships. And you could see how, you know, in different people, so much of like what makes us people sure is the same. I'm making a point like I'm <laughs> I mean, like this is obvious if you're a comic book fan or if you're not. Like I don't need, but I'm just like getting emotional about it. Yeah, because <laughs> I feel you really about like it. New Mutants. So yeah, <laughs> the the point I'm trying to make is that I really like New Mutants, and I really like this book. Good. It, I feel like it really embodies the spirit of New Mutants, and it feels like a very now version of New Mutants. Cool. And even though we've had several like kickstarts of New Mutants, um, and we've entertained things like exploring the characters sexuality before like i don't think it's been handled in a way that felt more like let's take a, a culture or people who feel very much like outsiders or um or aren't feeling welcome right now and put them into a team that's gonna like welcome everybody like yeah uh it was a feels like a great time for it perfect title and book for it and it was a really fun easy read too which again important thing for comic books yeah is to have like a fun romp um uh i love the team right now i love that um no girl has kind of changed her mantle and has like a body again and there's so many things to be said about like bodily autonomy and figuring out sure. who you are with having a character that used to just be like a floating brain yeah. <laughs> who now like has herself a uh, body to have autonomy over again. Um, they do so many cool, beautiful things with the character's powers and what they mean um, in a more metaphorical way. So uh, I just love everything about this book. Sorry. I got all <laughs> sappy and on a high horse about it, but how dare you? <laughs> try to enjoy a comic book on this comic book podcast but definitely by new mutants lethal legion it's a i think it's a it it might be like a mini it's got to be with a with, with a, a subtitle. it's got a subtitle so i think it's something like a five issue thing um so support that book um so we can get more stories like it hell yeah yeah that's awesome otherwise i read um soko that you read yeah. last week 
and echo a lot of the same feelings about it. Like it, it read kind of refreshing and interesting for like a, uh, detective, uh, legal drama. Yeah. Like you think in comics, those are run of the mill and very, uh, same thing done over and over again, but it was a quick, easy read that I was just surprised by again, because the, covers didn't necessarily strike me and sometimes on smaller publishers like i think that was sumerian yep um that you have a lot of first-time creators going to those smaller publishers and they don't the stories don't always like track or get all the themes across that they're trying to very well yeah and this one i was just really impressed by yeah i thought it was a lot of fun um I, I think just simply taking the cop story and moving it to a country that you don't normally see represented in yeah, media, right. like, did wonders for some reason. Yes, like, totally. This could have easily been just like a Michael Bay L.A. cop story, yeah. but it works way better in, like, East Europe. Well, and I don't, like, <laughs> that That was another thing where I don't know if we made this point last week, and sorry if we did, but... <laughs> there are so many problematic things I think about or so many touchy things you have to comment on if you're going to tell a hooray cops story in America. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the ways to make that refreshing and different or avoid having to like go through this very difficult conversation with what what it's like to be the police in America right now is take it out of America. For sure. And it's not as if um, these creators said, that's the problem I have, let me do this. They are actually from Europe. Yeah, I think it's Serbia. They're from, think... yeah, they're Serbians. Yeah. And uh, they're telling their story in their voice. Yeah. And it made uh, a cop drama refreshing for a couple Americans who are maybe fed up with, cop drama stories yeah and another advantage soko has is four issues yep (laughs) super easy (laughs) low low commitment yeah (laughs) um mike d and i did a little swapsy i read superboy yes and i echoed the same thing that you had a lot of fun uh taking superboy uh out of earth yep and just putting him on some planet was is brilliant just like it's it's almost the story I want out of like a Green Lantern comic. Yeah. Where like I want him to be a space cop. Mm-hmm. But Superboy does it with his own like you know body stuff. He's a clone of a, a of Superman and he has to deal with that as well as it's being re- space cop. Yeah, it's reminding you of the origin of the character and telling a brand new story while like getting back to basics with it. Yeah. Like the the framework of the story that set this Superboy run up is was just like brilliant, I think, for making it like an easy to dive into book. Yeah. Very fun. Yeah. Definitely gonna be picking that one yeah. up. Otherwise I'm I'm a little light on first issues because my um monthly shipment arrives tomorrow. <laughs> That's okay. I was like, please get here today so I can read some firsties, but uh not no no such luck. But next week I'll be locked and loaded. Perfect. With takes. I I'm a big two shill this week. All right. I read <laughs> Alien from 20th Century Studios, which is really just Marvel. I know. It's so funny to see that on the cover. It's so weird their looking, new, right? Their new imprint. Yeah. yeah. I don't like the, no offense to the graphic designer, um, but sometimes these like drop shadowy uh, bands that go across yeah. stuff. It just feels so laid on top of and Oh, it uh, definitely is. <laughs> uh you know, when they do like the so- like full width, like regular height bar across the top that says like, hey, this is a comic, the artwork feels unobstructed because it's not like partially laying over it. Yeah. Just like how I hate you know, on the top of the Dawn of DC stuff, they've got that like ovular semicircle band that goes down yeah it feels like that sort of graphic design feels like the difference between like college sports that have like brand new mascots designed Uh versus you know legacy guys the chicago bears which have like a timeless logo that'll like never look 
like not cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Like this stuff is so designy and now and uses like quick Photoshop drop shadows and stuff like that. That just makes it like feel out of place to me on a comic book cover. Hot takes from Mike D. I know on the these, covers. These might be um ones to pick up as as virgin covers because I, dude, I'm if not they a, had them, yeah, not a fan of the trade dress on these. Yeah, I mean it's a little blah for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but also here's the problem: that 20th Century Fox logo is 20th Century Studios. Sunny Century much. Studios. Is it? What's the deal with Fox? Are they owned by 20th Century Studios? No, 20th Century Studios was 20th Century Fox. And now Disney they... bought all that. Oh. The only thing that's still Fox is Fox News. Boo. Yeah, the news stuff. <laughs> Everything else is Disney now. Okay, so 20th Century Studios, they've kind of got the classic logo where it's all stacked on top of each other. Yeah. The text is so small in that. Yeah. And the 20 is so big. You have to make that logo huge to be able to read any of it. Yeah. So it's way too big on this cover. Yeah. But a lot of ranting about the graphic design today. Sorry. All that being said. Like I said, I'm kind of in a weird headspace. So <laughs> I think I'm going to listen back to this episode and be like, what the fuck was I doing the whole time? No, no, no. It's it's perfect. <laughs> All right. We love your hot takes. All right. Thanks. Uh, so this is, this is the third book that's on 20th Century. Okay. It's joining... Predator and Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. Um, it has yet to be seen whether we're going to get Marvel crossovers with those imprints yep. or more stuff. Yeah, whatever from you know, blast from the past kind of stuff. Anyway, um, this new Alien Volume Three is by Declan Shalvey. Love him, and he does such great work here. Yeah. Um, this is kind of a classic Alien story. The last two volumes have been fairly different Mm -hmm. when it comes to alien stories you know it's not alien on a spaceship attacking a guy you know there's kind of history there and the the last volume was all um synthetics yeah you know on a planet attacking aliens whatever this gets kind of more back to basics where this uh mining family on a planet has discovered frozen aliens Mm -hmm. on this moon and of course, Wayland Yutani comes in and says, "Well, your shit is our shit now." And of course, the aliens wake up; they're yeah. unfrozen. So, issue two, presumably, all havoc will break loose. But can't it... Wayland do anything right? No, <laughs> that's the whole point. <laughs> Worst company ever. Worst company ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am an absolute aliens fanboy. Yeah. Um. Might be my favorite movie series of all time. Yeah. I love Alien. So this was like, this hit all the buttons for me. Um, if you're an Alien person, go get this and you will absolutely not be disappointed. Uh, a side tangent will maybe save for the Patreon. But now I'm curious kind of what your rankings are. So, Oh, of the movies? Yeah. Yeah, I will rank them on the Patreon. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other book I read was... Green Arrow, yeah, number one from hey. DC. Uh, very cool book. So I didn't read any of the Dark Crisis stuff. Uh-huh. I'll say that. Yep. This comes like directly out of it, like 15 minutes later after <laughs> Dark Crisis <laughs> 6 or something. Um, but that being said, they did an awesome job getting me up to speed okay, great. on what happened. Because I now know that like Ollie was like, teleporting back home or something and he mm-hmm. got like pulled out of the time stream or something see even if you read it you still kind of have to be like i need a refresher yeah perfect great <laughs> well green arrow number one if you're interested in green arrow yep. uh it catches you up it kind of goes back and it harkens back to um year one yeah the the classic uh you know jock and whoever wrote that story whatever yeah. Uh, where Green Arrow's like stranded on an island. Well, in this, he's stranded in the future. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, and then the other half of the story is the rest of the Green Arrow family. Um, Black Canary, Speedy, and Green Arrow, his son, Connor Hawk. Yeah. Um, in in the present, trying to figure out, you know, what's going on? What's up with Ollie? Mm-hmm. Can we get him back? Is he gone? Um, I wonder what happened with Red Canary. 
was a character that was introduced during the Dark Crisis stuff. That is not something I would know. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. I didn't read Dark Crisis. Okay. I'm sorry. I've let you down. Yeah. I was curious to see if it was something that would like come into mainline once they ended Dark Crisis, but apparently not in, the, not in apparently this book. not in this issue. Yeah, right. Not in this book. I'll have to look into that. Um, but it, it was a lot of fun, a lot of action. There was a lot of plot points hit pretty hard. Yeah. Um, Speedy finds his estranged daughter like halfway through the book. Whoa! So she like kind of joins the fam, um, and then gets like immediately teleported to where ollie is okay yeah so like now ollie and his kind of surrogate granddaughter uh-huh. are in the future and everybody else is in the present yeah trying to figure out how to get them back yeah fun story kind of lighthearted. you don't have to use a lot of brain cells to digest it yeah right but it's a lot of fun it was really good i liked it <laughs> that's cool it's one of those things that's it's hard to explain to somebody and make it not sound convoluted yeah when you're talking about jumping back and forth in time and these characters and their families and interrelationships but they do read a lot more simply traditionally i think especially when it's not tying into other books directly right now yeah that it's kind of just we're focusing on this one group of characters. Um, it just it kind of reminds me of where Batman is at right now. Yeah, it, it you, reminds me a lot of that. You there. drop Brucey into a kind of alternate multiverse. Yeah, and the Bat family is trying to track him down. Correct. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot like that. Um, only you don't have to re- have like the backup stories to yeah. get the full picture. Yes, this is kind of just laid out for you. Um, written by Josh Williamson. Love Josh Williamson. Love him. Absolutely love him. He wrote an absolutely home run flash run that he's mm-hmm. coming off of. And he's writing Superman or action comics. Yep. Action well, comics, I believe. Action. Um, the Robin run he finished up was great. Yeah. So he's absolutely killing it. Um, Green Arrows. It's a good time. Yeah. I really liked it. Hell so. yeah. That's all I got. Nice. Another successful episode. Excellent job, Mike. Despite my injuries, I have persevered. Like Michael Jordan at the finals, you had that towel over your head. <laughs> is this my flu game this is episode? Your, this is your flu game, baby. <laughs> and you nailed it, buddy. Appropriate for an NBA postseason era episode of First Issue Club. Go Knicks! Bye-bye. First Issue Club is edited and produced by Mike DeStacy, Greg Licktig, and Andy Vargas. Follow us on social media at First Issue Club and check out our Patreon for videos, audio, and more at patreon.com slash first issue club.